Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak, and in this video, I'm gonna show you our new system to adapt a pedal drive to our skin-on-frame canoes. So just really quick here before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Brian. I've been building skin-on-frame boats professionally for over 20 years. I offer plans and online video courses teaching people how to build their own skin-on-frame boats. I design canoes and kayaks, but today we're gonna to focus on canoes. Our canoe building system will let you build canoes that can be rowed, they can be sailed, they can be catamaran together, and they can also be nested together like Russian dolls, which makes storage and transport a lot easier. So now with this latest release, we are adding two more features to that package. The first one is the ability to install a pedal drive, and the second one is the ability to install an electric motor into that same adapter box. Starting out with why I designed this system, this is actually something that I've thought about in the past, but decided not to do because the complexity of the project just seemed kind of incongruent with the simplicity that I try really hard to maintain in my designs. But this spring, I got an email from a gentleman with a spinal injury who was wondering if we could put a pedal drive into one of our boats because he can't twist his back to use a kayak paddle. And coincidentally, I'm actually in the exact same situation right now. So even though I knew it would be a much more complicated project than I'm used to, I figured I would take a stab at making a couple prototypes. And what we ended up with is a really cool system that has really unlocked a whole new level of functionality in terms of speed and distance, canoe fishing, and possibly even the ability to add outriggers and larger sails in the future. But before we get into all that, why don't we just start by taking a quick tour of the system and I'll show you how everything works and then we can come back here and I'll talk about the advantage, the disadvantages, how much it weighs, how much it costs, and finally how it performs on the water. All right, so starting out with the pedal drive adapter, this plywood plate is the heart of the system. This is a very high quality dense plywood covered with epoxy and glued and screwed into the frame. And the fabric itself is actually laminated to the outside of the plywood on the underside, which ties everything together, which is super important because the pedal drive puts a tremendous amount of force on this framework. So from here, we've got one of two different options. The first one is that we can just put this really simple plywood plug that can sit on top just like this, and it gets fastened down with truss head bolts. And then when those bolts are tight, the water can't get in and you can use this just like any other normal canoe. Now, the other option is to put this adapter box on top of it and fasten it in place. And then you can put in a pedal drive. This one just happens to be a Hobie Mirage drive, but there are other options. Push this down in there. And then the way this works is you can push these pedals back and forth with your feet and that makes flippers underneath the canoe go back and forth, and that drives the canoe forward, or in the case of a reversible drive, also backwards as well. Now, for the leg length adjustment on this, at least on the Hobie drives, this is really easy. All you've gotta do is push down this button right here, and you can push these pedals forward or back, and you can lock them in place anywhere along that range in two inch increments, and there's about 14 inches of overall adjustment here, although we can functionally only use about 12 of that just because of our particular adapter box geometry. Now, in addition to the pedal drive, you can also use this same adapter box to mount a Bixby electric kayak motor with the Mirage Drive adapter attached to it. So this just fits down in here like this, slides down into these channels. I can lock it in place with some retainer pins, and then it's got this battery back here, which is not the biggest battery for an electric motor. A lot of times people will just put regular deep cycle batteries for this type of thing, but this is a lot lighter at seven pounds and it is fully waterproof. And the last thing we can do with this adapter box, at least until I start experimenting with dagger boards next year, is to install this funky little device, which I call the submarine. So the purpose of the submarine is to slide down in here and it doesn't waterproof the bottom of this hole. You're still gonna get water up in the box, but what it does do is prevent waves from splashing up into the canoe if you wanna take the drive out so you can just paddle this like a normal canoe, or if you wanna raise your sail up so those fins aren't creating a lot of drag. 
All right, so moving back to the seating area, this seat here is a little bit deeper than a normal canoe seat. And I've also created this tall backrest that you can push against when you're pedaling. And then down here, we've got the tiller for the rudder system integrated directly into the seat, which is perfect because then your rudder control is exactly where your hands are already naturally resting. And to steer, all you've got to do is push this tiller bar a tiny bit forward or pull it a little bit back. And coming back from the tiller, I've got rudder lines sliding behind the ribs so they don't catch on any cargo in the boat. And they end up back here at this super simple kick up rudder. So obviously the control lines are gonna pull the rudder back and forth so you can steer. And this line in the center leads forward to a cleat so you can pull the rudder up when you're not using it. And the nice thing about going with an aluminum plate rudder like this is I don't need a separate downhaul line so this will kick up if I hit any obstacles. So that's the basic idea of how this works. Now let's talk about how it paddles. Basically, the use case for the pedal drive canoe is the exact same use as any other type of canoe. It's built for fast travel and moderate cargo capacity in semi-protected waters. And for me personally, it was really important to build this with the idea that all this stuff could be removed so I could also just use it as a normal canoe. Now, as far as how it behaves on the water, the first thing you're gonna notice is that this is a lot faster and it's a lot easier to push with the pedals than it is with a paddle. And part of that is the efficiency of the newer Hobie fin shaping. And the other part of it is just the fact that you're literally using the largest muscles in your body. So for example, if I'm just paddling a normal solo canoe, I'm generally not traveling faster than about three miles per hour. Whereas in something like this, it would be easy to maintain four miles per hour and I could do it for a lot longer without fatiguing those larger muscles. I think the max sprint speed that I've gotten up to in this 14 and a half foot prototype is a little bit over six miles per hour, which I definitely couldn't do with a canoe paddle. Now, moving beyond speed, the other advantage to being able to push with your legs is just the consistent, steady application of power, which makes a really big difference when you're trying to push into a headwind, especially in a solo canoe. Now, as far as maneuverability goes, it's really hard to make any type of a blanket statement here because it just depends on how tight your canoe normally tracks. If you build a really tight tracking canoe, you might actually find that the rudder increases your maneuverability, whereas if you have a really loose, playful canoe, you might find that it decreases your maneuverability a little bit. The nice thing, however, is that once you pop the rudder up, you can just grab your spare paddle and turn the boat exactly like you would normally, which can be really helpful when you get into tight spaces or possibly when you need to back up if you don't have the reverse drive. Now, speaking of the reverse drive, how this works is you pull this lever and then that flips the fins the opposite direction so they can go backwards. And obviously I have one of these personally, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary because it takes about the same amount of time to reverse those fins as it does to just grab your spare paddle and back up that way. Also, if you don't need the reverse function and you have smaller feet, that will allow you to potentially raise the lip of the drive box up higher, which will give you more cargo capacity because you can sink the canoe a little bit deeper and still maintain a safe flood level to the top of the box. Now, for solo canoes, this isn't much of a concern because generally speaking, any solo that is wide enough for you to feel stable in is also gonna sit high enough up in the water to avoid concerns about water coming in through the drive box. So when I'm considering sizing for a solo, I'm generally just thinking about the trade-off between stability and paddleability because another important thing to consider when you're leaning back against the backrest is that you don't have the same amount of dynamic stability that comes from bending at the waist as you do when you're sitting upright and using it just like a normal canoe, which can make the pedal drive feel a little bit less secure, especially in rough water. Now, we can always compensate for that by going wider, but that's also going to increase the distance that you have to reach over sideways if you're planning to use the same canoe for paddling. So choosing a size for a solo just really depends on your personal needs. If you're someone who wants to use this half for pedaling and half for paddling, I would probably advise that you build it about the same size as you would normally so you have a comfortable stroke. But if you're gonna use this mostly for pedaling and just paddling once in a while, 
especially if you want to use it as a platform for fishing, photography, or hunting. I would recommend going a little bit wider for a little bit more stability, and all the instructions for how to do that are in our plan sets. Now, moving on to tandem canoes, here we don't have to worry so much about stability as just being careful not to overload the canoe. So for tandems built with this system, I'm gonna be recommending building a little bit bigger and possibly packing a little bit lighter just to make sure that we don't exceed the safe flood level for that box. It shouldn't flood over the side if you're leaning over to maneuver, and it also shouldn't splash over the front or the back of the box. And then finally, it should not make your canoe significantly harder to rescue, which is something we're still in the process of testing, so I'm gonna have to make a separate video about that later. Now, next up here, let's talk about how much all this stuff weighs. Basically, the whole system, including the rudder, the seating, the pedal drive, and the drive box, is gonna add about 17 extra pounds to the weight of your canoe. So, for example, a small tandem weighs about 45 pounds in canoe mode, but 62 pounds with all the pedal drive stuff attached. And for a solo, that's gonna be more like 33 pounds and 50 pounds. Now, this isn't much of a problem for a normal canoe launch because I can either bring the canoe down to the water and then bring the pedal drive on a separate trip, and it only takes about five minutes to put that together, or I can just put the whole thing on a canoe cart, which is pretty easy to remove regardless of the extra weight. So next up here, let's talk about cost. Everything you're gonna to need to build our half of the system is probably gonna set you back around $100, but the Mirage drives themselves are not cheap. So for example, if you just get the standard non-reversible drive, that's gonna cost you about $800, and that is quite a bit of money, but it also opens the door to a brand new type of propulsion with drives that are proven to be durable and highly efficient. Now, there are less expensive options out there. For example, some of the older Hobie drives with non-kickup fins, and there's also a knockoff of an older Hobie design called a Freedom Drive, also without the kickup fins. But I can tell you unequivocally that the older Hobie style is incredibly sluggish compared to the new fin shape. So even though it might be tempting to go with the older drive to save some money, I would highly recommend purchasing the newer technology, especially because it has the kick up feature on the fins so you don't do damage to the drive or to the bottom of your canoe. Now, as far as how much extra work this adds to the project, generally speaking, building one of my full-size solo canoes is about a 50 hour job and setting up for the pedal drive system is probably gonna add about another 20 hours on top of that. And if you wanna build a tandem, you're looking at probably more like an extra 15 hours of build time on top of that. So it's definitely more work, but it's still light years faster than building a canoe out of wooden strips or even out of plywood. Okay, so I think that covers all the essential details. Next up, I wanna talk about the design process that I went through to make this happen, and also some pretty exciting things that I think we're gonna be able to do with this in the future. So to design the system, the first thing I did was paddle a couple different pedal drive kayaks and then measure about 10 others, and then I just built a really quick and dirty mock-up of the adapter box to see if it was gonna work, and then I started prototyping with the smallest possible solo canoe that I thought could work with this system. And the reason that I started with a deliberately undersized canoe is because I needed to understand how much the pedal drive system would change the stability of the canoe, and I knew that it would be much easier to assess that in the smaller sizes than it would in the bigger sizes. So for the first prototype, this turned out pretty well. It is definitely less stable with the drive than just sitting normally in a canoe, but not hugely different. I also learned some really important lessons about the stress that the drive puts on the frame and how to modify that for the next version. So next up for the second prototype, I built a small tandem slash large solo canoe. Basically, it's a canoe that can be paddled forward with two people or I can switch the rudder to the opposite end and sit in the front seat facing backwards, turn the pedal drive around, and then I can use it like a solo canoe. And just like with the solo prototype, I deliberately undersized the tandem side of this so I could check the stability and also the rescue ability of an undersized canoe because I knew that if the system would work on an undersized boat, it would definitely work on a properly sized tandem. And just like with the solo prototype, 
This one can be used in either pedal or paddle mode, or if you want to, you can combine the two, which is actually really useful sometimes. And a really interesting feature is that in pedal mode, the bow person has the option to face backwards to reach the pedals so they can take over for the other person, which could be hugely useful for long distance tripping scenarios where you don't want to pause and you want to keep making miles. So that's where we're at right now with the prototyping process. But for me, the most exciting thing is what might be coming next, which is the possibility that this system gives us for upwind sailing and also adventure racing. So taking the sailing topic first, I've built a variety of small scale boats out of skin on frame over the years, but I've never officially released a design because as soon as you start thinking about upwind sailing, your boat immediately gets twice as expensive twice as complicated. And for me, that really didn't fit in with the minimalist philosophy that I've always tried to incorporate into my designs. However, let's say I already have a rudder system and a trunk in the middle of the canoe that is deeply integrated into the frame for some other reason. Well, in that case, it kind of changes the whole equation because at that point, it really doesn't take that much more work to slap a dagger board into that drive box slot and also throw a slightly bigger sail rig, and then we can start sailing upwind. And so to take things even a step further than that, I don't see any reason that I can't use the same system that I designed to catamaran these canoes together to add outriggers instead. And then at that point, yes, you do have a pretty complicated little boat, but you also have something that can be paddled, pedaled, or sailed with enough stability to potentially be used in open water, which is something that I think a lot of adventure racers might be pretty excited about. Now, keep in mind, those ideas are not tested yet, but that's where we're gonna be heading over this next year. Right now, I'm having some custom inflatable outriggers built for me, and then we're gonna take the tandem canoe down to Mexico for a few months and test it in semi-protected waters with the outriggers and a smaller sail. And then if I get favorable results from that testing, Next spring, I'm going to build a larger prototype out of stiffer wood, and we're going to experiment with putting a bigger dagger board and a much bigger sail on it. So that's the pedal drive system as it exists right now. For anyone who's interested in adding this to their own skin on frame canoe, we just put up a video course and a plan set on our website. Now, just in case you're not familiar with the structure of our course materials, let me take a second to show you how this works. So starting out here on the Cape Falcon Kayak website, I'm gonna go up to where it says classes and plans. And that's gonna take you to our learning platform where we have all of our video courses and plan sets. So I'm gonna scroll down to where it says pedal drive system for skin on frame canoes. And you can see here, it starts out with a brief course description. And then the videos themselves are organized into a series of chapters. For example, the introduction chapter here has the introduction, which I'm giving right now. And then just a bunch of various overview videos you're gonna to wanna to watch before you start building. And then next chapter is the downloadable PDF plan set, which also includes a pair of free sample plans if you wanna check this out before you purchase. And then from there, it's just a whole bunch of short videos covering absolutely every part of the process. And this is what that's gonna look like if you're actually taking the course. Basically, you just scroll down to whatever part of the process you're working on, and you can watch the video and follow along with your own woodworking. Also, if you don't have Wi-Fi in your shop, I wanna remind you that you can watch these videos on a mobile device over a cellular connection, or you can download them individually and watch them that way. Now, coming back out to the main menu, I also wanna point out that in addition to the pedal drive adapter instructions, we also have detailed instructions for making a simple canoe rudder and detailed instructions for building canoe seats, both flat seats and also curved laminated seats. Now, just to finish up here, let's go back up to that plan set that I was showing you earlier. And taking a quick look at these sample plans, I'm not gonna go through every single page here, but just to give you an idea of how these are laid out, you can see we've got a tools list, we've got a materials list, We've got an overview page that shows the drive box and all the different parts. We've got a page that talks about some of the limiting factors that you wanna be aware of before you start building. We've got detailed information for sizing the canoe to make sure it's actually gonna work with the pedal drive system. And then from there, it just gets into all of the different jigs and drawings and formulas, basically everything you're gonna to need to know to be able to complete this project. 
And keep in mind, you're looking at the sample plans right now, which are basically identical to the actual plans. They just don't have the numbers on them. And coming all the way to the bottom here, just like I said earlier, we also have detailed information for building a canoe rudder. And we have detailed information for building canoe seats. So you can see this is a super comprehensive resource. And the reason I go into this level of detail is because in my experience with boat plans, you spend over half your time scratching your head trying to figure out exactly what you need to do. So with the videos and also with this plan set, that should remove all that uncertainty and you can work through the project a lot more efficiently. Also, as with all of my courses, this is a one-time purchase and you have lifetime access to all the materials. So as the course changes, you can always take advantage of the newer updates. And just like anytime you're taking one of my building courses, you can call me or text me anytime for help during the build. And I will also give you a personal sizing consult for your canoe before you get started. Okay. So I know that was a long video. Thanks for hanging in there. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the system develops over the next couple of years. We have put a huge amount of effort into making this happen. So I think I'm gonna take a break for a while and then hopefully in a month or two, I'll be able to start sending out updates from Mexico to show you how things are going with the outriggers and the sailing system. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And click the notification bell if you want to find out when we release new videos. You can also find us on our website at capefalconkayaks.com where we have skin on frame building video courses, plan sets, and various free skin on frame resources. You can also find us on Instagram at Cape Falcon Builds where we post a daily build blog of everything we're working on in the shop. Or if you're a Facebook user, we post that same content on our Cape Falcon Kayak business page as well. And just like I say every time, even if you're not normally a social media person, I would really encourage you to check out the Instagram or the Facebook page because there's just so much more cool stuff there than ever makes it here onto the YouTube channel. All right, I think that's it for now. Take care, be safe on the water, and have fun building your skin boat.